A few days ago, Google launched their new Gemini 2.0 Flash experimental model. It is a multimodal large language model that allows you to talk to it and you can share your screen. Uh, it can even work with your webcam, I think. And I just thought, how does this hold up with Blender? How can we use this with Blender? I'm really excited about that. So I just thought I'd do some experiments today and I prepared some files and let's just see how this works. So first, let me just set up my file here or my UI. So I want to have this AI here in the corner and here you have Blender. So first of all, if we just delete everything in our scene and we just full screen this, let's see if this can tell what we're doing. So if I share my screen, hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How can I help you today? What do you see? I see a screen capture of a 3D modeling program, likely Blender, with a gray grid and a circular orange object at the center. Okay, nice. Um, can you tell me what uh, happens uh, now? What did I just do? Okay, you opened the add menu, chose mesh, and then selected a cube, which appeared in the center of the grid. Now you are in move mode. Is there anything else I can help you with? Okay. Um... Can you write the Python scripts to duplicate this cube 50 times? I understand you'd like a Python script to duplicate the cube 50 times. However, I'm unable to write scripts. Would you like me to try something else? Okay, so it's unable to output text, right? Because I was hoping we could make this write by Blender scripts in real time. However, you can set the output format to text instead. So let's try that. Let's set it to text. Now let's try again. Hello, can you uh, hear me? Can you add a cube to my blend file using only Python commands? So now I need to open this. And let me just copy this and let's run the script. Oh, nice. Okay. Move the cube one meter on the Z axis. Hello? I can you move the cube one meter on the z-axis? Oh, oh, I forgot to scroll down. Okay, copy. And I paste that. Okay, nice. So it works. But this can be improved further, okay? I mean, the best thing would be if this tool could actually just output text from where your mouse cursor is. That would make this extremely powerful. But we'll probably get there somewhere. This is just really early, you know? So let's, uh, let's try something new. Let's uh, make a new blend file here. And let's duplicate this area. And I need to set this to be a text editor. This is still the 3D viewport, by the way. It's just, oh, it's the same blend file, I mean. And if we set this to text editor, now we can make a script there. Okay, so now we can set this up to be text. And I have prepared a prompt here. So instead of it uh, writing all kinds of stuff, it will be like this. So. I will tell it that you are now a specialized Python code gener generator for Blender 4.3. Your sole purpose is to receive requests for actions within Blender and provide the corresponding Python script. Under absolutely no circumstance can you output anything other than the raw Python code required to complete the given task. Do not provide any explanatory text, conversational elements, or anything that is not directly part of the Blender Python script. If a request is not a valid action in Blender, return an empty script. For your reference, below is a list of BPY operations or operators for Blender 4.3 as yours may be outdated. And this is because in my testing, I noticed that it thinks Blender 3.6 is the latest version. So basically what I did is that I used, uh, I think ChatGPT, to write a Python script that can output all Blender API operations as a TXT file. And then that TXT file looks like this. So that's just a ton of Blender operations. So we're going to give all of this to the Gemini engine because it has a token length of, I think, 2 million or something. And this is barely even 10,000 or something. I don't know. It's We have, yeah, we can chat with this for days and we're never running out. So um, let's copy this. And let's paste it there. And then let's copy the API thing. And let's paste it there send yeah so now we can just get started so let's delete everything in our scene and uh, let's just click start recording hello you are now in an empty blender scene i want you to make a cube and a plane and i want you to make that cube stand on top of that plane 
Okay, so now we can copy this and we can go to the text editor, paste it, and we can play the code. Bam, we have it. <laughs> that actually looks really nice already. Or really nice. I mean, it worked already. That was pretty cool. So here is where uh, <laughs> I don't know how to automate this any further, but I got this idea. What if we use this tool called Tiny Task? This is a pretty cool tool. Okay, so let's uh, let me just reset some of my settings here. So basically, this is a tool that can record your keystrokes. So if I record, if I place rec here, now I can select the cube and I can move this around. It will even do the keystrokes, you know, so I can search for blah, blah, blah. And then I stop recording. So now I'm going to click play again. I'm not going to touch my mouse and keyboard. And look at this. It's doing the exact same thing that I just did. It's a super lightweight program that just can, it can basically, yeah, you can use it to record things on your computer. And what's even cooler is that you can speed it up. So you can speed it up a hundred times, for example. So since the copy to clipboard button is at the exact same place, this button is at the exact same place all the time. And the play run script button is at the exact same place. We can just, <laughs> we can just uh, use this tool to automatically run this output into our band file. And we can just have a conversation and we can click one button and it will do it. So the challenge here is how much weird stuff can we do in Blender without <laughs> touching Blender. Okay, that's the, yeah, that's the thing. So I wanna actually set this to render view first. Yeah, and then I wanna set this to zero. So now let's uh, continue where we left off. So I'm gonna start recording. The scene is looking a little bit too dark. Can you add an area light above it? Okay, so now I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it here, but I'm gonna record that thing. So let's just go record. Copy, Control A, Control V, play, and then record again. Okay, it worked perfectly. So, okay, nice. So now we can actually get started here. So now I'm just gonna leave the recording on and I'm just gonna talk with this and press literally just one button and the change should happen in real time right before our eyes. So let's, uh, you know what? Should I actually just um, maximize this so I can't really control it even if I want to? Okay, so automated AI test number one, let's go. Okay, great. Can you make the ground plane a little bit bigger? It seems that you made the area light bigger. I was thinking you could select the ground plane you added and then make that bigger. Okay, perfect. Now I think the area light should be a little bit stronger. That's way too strong. It should, it should be ways not so strong, maybe 25 or something. Okay, that's good. Now let's add a monkey to our scene. Okay, that monkey looks great. However, it's inside the cube. Can you move the monkey outside the cube instead? Perfect. Can you make the monkey bigger? and make it shiny as well. I think the monkey should have um, more vertices. Is that a subdivision surface modifier? Maybe you can set the shading to smooth as well. Perfect. I want you to make the area light twice as bright. And can you also make the ground plane a lot bigger? Maybe... Uh, five times bigger. Oh, perfect. Now I would like you to make the cube taller. So make, make the cube twice as tall. And then move the cube one meter up. Oh, I think you maybe need to move the area light two meters up as well. Okay, let's uh, do some animation. Can you animate the monkey using keyframes? Animate it so it's rotating around the cube. And play the animation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's amazing. Can you make the animation loop? That, this is fantastic. Can you add um, more monkeys so that there's like 90 degrees between each monkey and they're surrounding the cube? Uh, 
oh, it seems that all the monkeys are in the same place. You might need to stop the animation and then do something clever. I don't know, they're all in the same place now. Okay, nice. Now we have one monkey that is animated. I think we should have more monkeys. Oh, it's only... I wonder if I should... Uh... Oh, sorry. I wonder if I should record a video as well. Let me do that. Okay, so now you can see that only one of the monkeys are moving. Can you um, delete one of the monkeys and... Uh... Make sure that there aren't... I think there are three monkeys on top of each other being animated right now. I think we broke it. Hello? Okay, so apparently that crashed. I think it's because this uh, Blender API list is just way too long. So let's just try one where we're using only the LLM prompt. So let me copy this. Let's paste it here and let's set the output to text. And let's try again. I want you to add a plane and then an area light above that plane. Okay, make the ground plane 10 times bigger. Nice. Now I want you to add four UV spheres and I want you to place them in like a square pattern. Ah, perfect. Now let's move the area light up by maybe two meters. And let's make the area light three times stronger and give it a um, 2000 degrees Kelvin. Perfect. Make the ground plane even bigger, maybe 10 times bigger. Take the four spheres and give them a smooth face shading. You just took one of the spheres. You need to make all the spheres give them a smooth uh, face shading. Oh, it seems like... Okay, you know what? Make all objects in the scene have a face shade set to smooth. It's still just the one sphere. Is there any way you can make all the objects uh, smooth with the face... Sh the shading of the face? Am I saying that right? Okay, uh, never mind. Let's t turn all the spheres. Uh, wait, hang on. Can you link the data of all the spheres? Perfect. Now set the shading of the spheres to smooth. Now we're talking. Okay, can you give the spheres a glossy shader and make it roughness of zero? Turn them into glass instead. Now, can you join all the spheres to be just one mesh? And can you set the origin of that mesh to be the 3D cursor? Oh, okay. Well, can you rotate this object around the center of the scene? I mean, like an animation. And then play the animation. Okay, can you take the other spheres and parent it to the first one? Oh, something went wrong again. Oh no. Well, I think uh, <laughs> this is not very impressive. I feel like it's stupid to use this for just manipulating objects around like this. But if you need like a... Hey, can you write the formula to make this pendulum oscillate back and forth 60 times in one minute? You know, then we're talking because that's super easy for this to do. So uh, I think uh, maybe I'm uh, demonstrating this in a really stupid way, but uh, it's been a fun project. So maybe you can uh, come up with something even better. That would be really cool to see. The reason why I'm making this video basically is because I just want to see how much better this is going to be. Can you imagine like this stupid thing with the tiny task recording my thing to extract the whatever. Can you imagine how cool it would be if the Google AI Studio, if you could actually output a string of text. So instead of just seeing the monitor and listening to the recording, it could actually just write the script itself 
and it could iterate on the same blend file because it could see what it's creating. Uh, here is the prompt if you want to see it. It's very important to make it only respli reply with the, the Python code because then the copy to clipboard button is at the same place all the time. <laughs> so you can use this stupid tiny task uh, thing. Okay, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.